Hello everyone, this video is about dead time compensation using a Smith predictor and in this video we are going to discuss what is dead time compensation, when is it useful and how does it work. For dead time compensation you have to consider a process consisting of at least a first order behavior with a dominant time constant tau1 and a delay time tau d in this case. Dead time compensation, also called DTC, by implementing or using a Smith predictor if re is relevant if the ratio between that dominant time constant tau1 and the delay time tau d is equal than the two, 2 or smaller than 2. So that is um, the precondition for using a Smith predictor or in words you could say when the delay time is relevant with respect to that first order time constant tau1. So how does it look like? So we define the dead time as the delay time. And when looking to this block diagram, we start off with the process. And this is my hardware. This is my real system. And it has a behavior like shown in this picture over here. And we are going to model this behavior by a first order system, which is um, depicted over here with a transfer function kp over 1 plus s times tau and a delay and the transfer function for delay equals e to the power minus s times the delay time tau d. So how can you do that? You can um, derive for instance the method which is explained in the Ciclo Nichols method number one. So we have a first order behavior which is shown over here and we have a delay which is shown in this transfer function and in the model placed over here. So again, this is my real hardware and this is my model split up in a first order behavior and a delay. So what happens now, um, because when we have a good model, you could say, well, let's um, close the feedback loop from the output of that first order model over here and use that as a feedback to my reference point over here. But of course we make an error because we don't know ex we don't exactly model this process in a first order delay or first order system and the delay. There are other dynamics or other aspects in this process, so we make an error. And that error is um, the output of my real process minus the output of my model over here. And that error is added to the output of my first order model. So in case we have a very good model, that error over here is very small. So we add that up to the output of my first order model and that is my feedback path towards my reference over here. And we control our process by a PI controller. And that is because there is a delay in my system and then it's always good to have an integrator in your controller. So again, um, if the model output um, CM, if this output equals my system output C, then the error we make is very small. So then we have a really good um, yeah, process estimation and we can really use um, the first order model as a feedback loop over here. So then we have this two blocks in my feedback loop, which is the PI controller and only the first order system. So the delay is not in my feedback path again, and that makes it very, um, very well for using um, uh, an extra gain in my PI controller, which means that I can have a really larger bandwidth, which is really good for um, system speed and of course, because of that extra phase lag, which we don't have, because the delay is not in the loop, um, we have an increased stability. And that is really an advantage of using that um, Smith predictor using dead time compensation. So how do we get the parameters for my PI controller? So first of all, we say, well, it's a PI controller, so this is my standard transfer function for my PI controller, in which this is the integrating part and this is my proportional part. So it's KR, the proportional gain, times 1 plus S times the integration constant tau i divided by S times tau i. And it's a really good starting point 
um, to define the integration time constant tau i equal to the dominant time constant of my model, so of my process over here. So let's say tau i is equal to, uh, to the time constant, the dominant time constant tau. Then we can define the proportional gain of my PI controller, and that is, and a good starting value is equal to 2 over KP, and KP is the system gain of my first order process over here, times tau, which is the dominant time constant of my first order model, um, divided by tau d, which is the delay time over here. So this is a very good starting value. So this is a rule of thumb for defining that starting value. So now let's look to um, some simulations which show how that time composition really works out. And in this simulation, I have a model for my process. So in real life, this should be my hardware. And my process in this example consists of a second order model, which has been split up into a first order parts. So this is a first order part and this is a first order part. And remember the number before the S is my time constant. So the first first order part has a time constant of two seconds and this part has a time constant of 0.5 seconds. So this is my dominant time constant. And also in my process there is a delay. And remember the, um, the uh, ratio between my dominant time constant 2 and my delay time 10 is uh, 0.2, which um, meets the requirement of using that time compensation with a Smith predictor. So this is my process, delay and a second order transfer function, and it's controlled by a standard PD, PID controller, a PI controller, there's no derivative action in it. So this is my standard I controller, and this is my proportion part over here. What we have seen is when this is my feedback loop and I um, do not um, uh, use that time compensation, then I can see that this system became unstable for KRS 0.3. So I have implemented a gain of 0 .15, 0 0.15, which is half the KR when my system um, starts to oscillate. So I have a gain margin of 2. Now let's use that time compensation um, added to this um, standard function. So what we do with a dead time compensation, um, we use uh, the dominant first order transfer function. So the first order transfer function with the dominant delay, which is this part. So you see the dominant time constant is two uh, seconds over here. And we have modeled that delay. And that was this part of my real process. And remember, this should be the real hardware. So I have a model from a real hardware consisting of a first order model with the dominant time constant and the delay. And now I've um, used the feedback from my first order model towards the reference point over here. And I add up the error which I make um, between the real output of my process and the simulated output over here. And I added that output to, uh, to um, the output of my first order model over here. And what we see now is that when we um, um, try to um, see how this system works, I can increase my gain up to KRS 0.8, still having a good stability and really having a good performance. That is shown in this graph over here. This is my response to a step, so my step response when I only use that PI controller, the first example. And you see a really large overshoot and you see a really large settling time uh, over here. And the green one, the green curve is the situation in which I also added that time compensation. So DTC is used, the Smith predictor um, is, um, is alive, it's uh, in my system. And you see that the overshoot is really much lower than when we have only the PI controller. And also the settling time is really decreased, so it's really good for performance. And also stability has increased, um, at least by seeing that the ringing so the, the ringing over here is much less dramatic, which was the case when we use only the PI controller. So summarized, um, that time compensation using a Smith predictor is really relevant if you meet this condition. So when you have a system 
uh, consisting of at least a first order system and the delay time in which ratio between that dominant time constant and the delay time is smaller than 2 or equal than 2 to 2. And the advantages of using a Smith predictor is that you get a better controllable process. Um, that uh, We have shown that by using um, the simulation. You can increase the KR, the sort of proportional gain, which increases the bandwidth in which we get a really faster system. So that is good for performance. And we have seen that ringing uh, is uh, not as much than when you only use the PI controller, so also my stability really increase. So that is very good um, for using that time compensation. And when, when you have want to have more information, practical information, please go to the website of MathWorks. And um, when you um, use this uh, hyperlink, you see a nice example about Smith predictor in the MathWorks context. So thank you very much. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and I see you next time.